DIY project number seven, we have our first Eurorack module, the nonlinear circuit sloth chaos. So as you can see here by this LED, this thing will cycle about every 15 seconds and the LED is uh, bicolor, so it'll show you if it's in positive or negative. So within a few seconds here, we should see it change to red. Hopefully I'm not making a liar out of me. And, uh, well, it's staying there. There we go. Now it's in the negative and it should stay there for about 15 seconds or so and then go back to green. So, um, this is a chaotic oscillator. There it is. Now it's back to green. And, um, it's different than a random module, which the 2HP module right here is a random module. Um, but in a lot of people colloquially will interchange random and, and chaos, but they're actually different things. Uh, I'm not going to go into a huge dissertation here about what it is, um, but essentially, random is is com is basically completely unpredictable. It's like flipping a coin. You can't tell if you flip a coin. You have no idea if the next one's going to be heads or tails. Even if the last one was heads or tails, the last twenty were heads or tails. You still have no idea what's coming next. With a chaos circuit, it is it is uh, somewhat predictable, but it's not. It's going to make small changes as it oscillates. So it's really just a slow oscillator is really what this is. It's a really slow LFO. But every time it doesn't reproduce the same cycle like a sine wave, it produces a different cycle, a little bit different cycle every time. So it's always going to oscillate, but it's going to be slightly different. And an example in nature would be something like a dripping faucet. You know that thing's going to drip, but you don't know the size of the drop and you don't know the exact time at which it's going to drip. That's kind of what a, a chaos module does. So let's do a little demo of this thing. So for starters here, we'll use our little old Jarmageddon and we'll use our rusty, trusty, tiny tweed and we'll plug it into the sloth chaos here. And so let's hit it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be modulating the CV so it should move essentially the glitch algorithm as this thing cycles. So let's turn it on. And there we go. And we'll see what happens here. Okay, so let's see another example of this. So right now, I have this wavetable oscillator and it's being modulated by an LFO here. And let's turn on the tweed here. Okay. So you can hear the LFO modulating that. And this, obviously, it's an LFO, so it's oscillating, so it's very predictable. So over time, it's gonna just keep matching the rate that that LFO is, is running at. So as you see that light blink, you can see what it's doing. It's just modulating the wave table. Okay, that's predictable. Now let's take this uh, this LFO and instead we'll plug it into this chaos module. And now let's see what happens. Okay, so we see that that is predictable in that we know that that wavetable is gonna, gonna change, but the amount of time that it spends uh, on each particular section of the wavetable is very hard to predict. It's almost like a dripping faucet. So that's what this thing does. Uh, it's kind of a cool little module, very cheap and a very easy to build kit. I was impressed at how easy it is. By the way, there's one knob here you notice, and this knob, uh, does affect the way that um, the chaos kind of oscillates. 
So it um, will make it sometimes get stuck in a certain area more or less, um, which is kind of cool. It's just the, it just adds a little more chaos to the chaos, I guess. But anyway, that is the Sloth Chaos.